Hey, hey, what's up, party people? You guys ready to talk some hardware? Let's go. Welcome to the studio, everybody. I'll do a little walk around and then have a short explanation of my workflow towards the end. Um, really, it all started here when I was 13. I bought my first guitar. Well, I bought my parents bought me my first guitar. Um, taught myself how to play by ear, uh, just playing along uh, metal albums, blaring this thing for hours on end. Um, really, really, really got me into uh, into music and, and tuned my ear. So very, very grateful for that. Uh, by the way, I have entirely forgotten how to play guitar at this point, even though I was uh, fairly okay back in the day. Couldn't play to save my life at this point, but maybe someday I'll get back into it. Um, in 98, I bought my turntables um, and spent almost every weekend thereafter for the next couple of years uh, going out to LA and buying vinyl. Uh, played at a bunch of outdoor parties, uh, threw a couple of parties. That's the first party, actually, poster above it. Um, played a bunch of clubs, really, really got into electronic music through through this and, and all types, right? It was, it was house, it was techno, it was trance, it was drum and bass and all, all kinds of uh, fun genres there within electronic music. Um, that in turn got me uh, very interested into making music. I discovered Rebirth and kind of gave me my first taste of being able to work with a sequencer and what filters and decays and resonance and envelopes and all of those things actually did. Um, so that emulation was responsible for my first purchase, which is the Yamaha AM200. Uh, fun fact, bought it for myself uh, for Christmas in 2001. Um, on the way out to visit my now wife's parents and spent the entire three days glued to this box so that was fun uh, wonderful box still use it lots to this day uh, love it above it td3 doesn't need much of an introduction everybody's got one so it's like an asshole um, don't really use it because if i want an acid sound this produces it much better for for at least my liking um, it's also the first synth that i built myself back in 2004 or 5 uh, fantastic little box, love it, uh, love it to pieces. Uh, recently got this cheapo multi-effects pedal from Amazon that makes it sound even better. Uh, really, really usable delays and, and reverbs and overdrives on that little box. Properly noisy for a 303. Uh, this is the head of the operation, really. Um, this along with hardware jams is solely responsible for me actually starting to make music again. Um, in contrast, this is the box that I at least tell myself was responsible for me not making music for the better part of a decade. Uh, but joke's on you, Emu, because I found the MPC-1 and that has really, really kind of opened up my, my creative juices and gotten me into making music again. So love this little box. Uh, Korg Monologue, a monster, monster bass synth and, and just lead line uh, if you're looking for a good mono synth. Fantastic analog circuitry, uh, really good filter, love it to pieces. That audio goes into the NTS-1, uh, fun little box. The synth is okay, but the delays, as most of you know, uh, the delays, reverbs, and the rest of the effects on here are fantastic. I do need to spend more time and dive into the synth and the additional oscillators that are available online and see if I can get some usable sounds out of here. I'm sure I can. Uh, Korg Volca FM. Not much of an introduction needed there. Obviously, Mark's favorite uh, line of products from Korg. Um, actually get some really good uh, Reese's and stabs and basses for, for drum and bass out of this box. And of course, any typical 80s uh, type of sound that you're looking for. This thing is a, is a monster, especially for the price. Below that is the Novation drum station. Haven't used it in ages. As you see, it's not powered on. It's not even plugged in. I think it has a MIDI cable. Uh, yep, that's it. Um, and that's not going into anything. I ran out of inputs in my old mixer ages ago, so this thing got pulled out of the rotation so some of the other synths can, uh, can be plugged in. Uh, but that'll all change soon here, as you see in a second. Uh, moving over to the blue stack of power, uh, Korg MS2000R, really good poly synth, uh, but an even better poly synth, the Cobalt 8M. Really, really powerful, wonderful sound shaping and, and creation capabilities, especially if you pair it with the app. 
Uh, that's what the holder for the tablet is above it when I'm doing sound design with it. Really, really deep, wonderful sounding, wonderful sounding box. Moving down to the MB-808, um, home-built 808 clone. Uh, great, great box. It's in every piece of music that I've made since I've built this thing, this has been in it. Um, whether it's the entirety of the drum in a track or uh, just a kick and a snare or kick, snare, and hats, it's in everything. Love it. Uh, would never sell it. Uh, you guys have never seen them. They're pretty rare. Uh, there's some that are selling for over four grand, so pretty ridiculous money, but this thing's never leaving. Uh, moving over, another monster bass slash mono synth. Um, this is doesn't really need much of an introduction. It's a Minotaur, fantastic. Uh, Micro Monster 2, really good poly synth, uh, duophonic. Uh, use it a lot for stabs and pads and effects and sweeps and things of that nature. Really, really good little box. Uh, already kind of mentioned this little guy used it for ages uh, but really couldn't get along with a sequencer so now at this point because of the jewel that is the mpc one uh, this is essentially a sound module that i use really usable drums uh, really great synth sounds really good tweakability and, and just all around great sounding box uh, surprisingly especially for how old it is and the fact that it's all rom based but really really good sounding box the audio out of that goes through the flashback delay. Uh, not much to say there, just a really cool delay box. Uh, MIDI in and out, which is fantastic, so I can save patches and control the parameters from the MPC. Uh, Dark Star, uh, haven't used this in ages. This was actually the second box I bought after the Yamaha. Um, as you can see, it's not even plugged in. MIDI's hanging there. Uh, I just have it turned on, so it looks cool for you guys, but haven't used it in ages. Uh, moving on to the beloved Juno 106. Love this thing. I've had it since 2005, I believe. I bought it for 400 bucks. Um, I've since replaced all of the sound chips with the analog Renaissance slingshot chips. Really good sounding chips. Still sounds like a Juno, but just a little bit better. Um, even more transformational was the Kiwi mod. As you can tell, the front panel is a lot more complex than your traditional Juno front panel. Um, a lot more tweakability, sound shaping capability, and best of all is that I now have MIDI CC control of everything on here. Um, oh, and it also has digital memory, so I don't have to dick around with the battery anymore. Fantastic little upgrade. That goes through the Red Panda Particle version two, uh, granular delay, good little delay box. Um, this used to be my primary mixer for ages. Uh, it's old Soundcraft MFX board, um, very limited input number, especially for this. Um, so things were getting plugged in and out all the time. Cables look a mess. Not that they don't now, but they were much worse before. So now it's relegated to a uh, submixer just for the drum. So I have the individual outs from the MB-808 um, and soon to be in the empty slots will uh, be routing the drum station in there. So cool mixer, sounds great, but just limited, limited input. So that's what got me to get the Soundcraft 22 MTK multi-track. Do I use it? Nope, can I? Sure, I just have to get off my lazy ass and set up the template in uh, Ableton to be able to multi-track all this stuff. So that'll that'll be coming into a later date. The effects chain of the MTK goes through the Strymon Night Sky Reverb, fantastic reverb pedal uh, into an equally fantastic Strymon Volante delay pedal. Uh, lovely, lovely boxes. Um, the center pedal is a delay pedal that I use for the drum mixer. Um, cool artifacts and, and fun things come out of this box. Mm, soon to be a polyphase. I'm still troubleshooting and trying to get this thing to actually work. So we'll see if that happens. Um, really quick on workflow. Everything, like I said, kind of goes through here. Um, I set up a template and start jamming. Um, most important thing about the way I make my music is the attention and time I spend on drums, probably a little too much time, but 
Um, I do it anyway. I layer the shit out of my kicks, snares, and hats. Um, try to get variations in sounds and placements and uh, a lot of tuning of bass drums to make sure that it doesn't fight with the bass but sounds good and punches through. Uh, so that's really where the vast majority of my time is spent when I construct a track or a set is uh, really trying to get down and, and meticulous with, with the drums. Um, another quick point is in regards to transitions when I'm doing longer sets. Um, typically, um, most of the stuff is sequenced from here. However, I do use the Yamaha sequencer as well to um, use the 16 steps on it. As limited as it is, it provides a really good template to create transitions, right? So bringing in synth lines, I, I will bring it in through the 16 steps here. Um, then I would essentially disengage this part or the sequencer on this box and then start playing that same synth line, uh, but in a longer uh, progression over four bars on here. Um, and then conversely, as I am phasing out a track, I will turn this part off and turn this one back on um, and then switch the sequence on the MPC. So that allows me to carry over uh, the synth as well as any percussive elements that I'm using from this sequencer into the next track on the MPC. Um, and then within the first, uh, you know, 16 bars, I, or sorry, two bars, uh, I would disengage this and switch the program to the next track and so on and so forth. So hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for spending some time here in the studio with me today. Have a wonderful rest of your Carl Fest. Love you all. Bye. Thank you.